Hello everyone. Welcome back to Gardening with the Landscape Connection. My name is Michelle. I live in Northern Illinois Zone 5. Back in February, right after Valentine's Day, we talked about putting a cut flower garden in. I kind of went over the plan for all of that and what we're going to do. Well, since I made that plan, things have changed. I have made the garden actually smaller because you know what? I'm busier than I thought I would be and I don't want to make this garden so big that I can't handle it. So I'm starting with only four rows of garden area that I've already prepped. We removed the sod, I topped it with compost, and then I put cardboard down in these areas right here and then topped it with a road gravel uh, that I can have in between the rows so that I don't have weeds coming up in between. So back in February, we talked about how we're gonna have the cut flower mixers. We did have one already back in March, no, April, right at the beginning of April. It was like the Friday right after the first day of spring. It was cold outside, it was rainy, but we had a really good turnout. I think everybody had a really good time. And we have one, two, three, four, five more mixers that we'll be doing this summer. Now, I am a little late getting this planted. I had hoped to have this whole thing in like a week ago. Now nah, I haven't put one thing in the ground. So today we're gonna get the whole thing in. Some of what we're gonna plant, we're gonna do seeds. And so the seeds are going to be some of the sunflowers and we are going to succession plant those, so I'm not gonna plant them all today. I'm gonna to plant some today, I'm gonna to wait a couple weeks and plant some more, and then we'll just keep succession planting those. We're gonna hope that the squirrels don't get our seeds, uh, but we're gonna try that, and we are going to be planting um, an orange, a bicolor, a white knight, and those are the Pro Cut series from Johnny Seeds, and the reason we want these is because they're pollenless, and so they won't produce pollen, that will get all over everyone's furniture if they make an arrangement with these on the cut flower nights. I'm also going to be planting a, a Chianti hybrid. These also don't have pollen on them. They're multi-branched. They have this nice purple stem. So we're gonna plant those as well. And I have one more, it's called Busy Bee. And so it's a, just a yellow sunflower. We're gonna plant that one as well. I'm also going to do my zinnias from seed. And I am gonna do this little candy cane mix. These are a shorter variety, but I liked them, so I thought I'd try these as a shorter flower mix. Then we're going to be doing the Queenie Lime Orange, the, let's see, Cherry Bronze, the Queenie Red Lime, and the Benares Giant, and it's just a mix of z different zinnias. So we're gonna do those from seed. We're also gonna be doing some Cosmos from seed. I'm probably gonna regret these because I think these are gonna be the most high maintenance as far as picking and whatnot because they're so wispy they probably i i know i'm probably going to regret these but i'm going to put a little bit in the ground anyways and then i'm going to do fever few i've never grown this but i've watched other videos where they say this is a really good filler flower and it self seeds so i get it every year so i'm going to try this one as well and hope that i don't regret it so those are the ones i'm going to do from seed now other things that we brought in were we do have some that i winter sowed sown, sowed, I don't know the right word for that, but I did them in a jug and then they came up over the winter and then I took the lids off and I did that in a little short video and I've kept them in the back and I've been watering them this whole time and I'm going to get them out of their little jugs and get them planted today. Today, Most of those are the straw flowers. There are some snapdragons and I think that was about it that was actually going to go in this cut flower garden. There's some other ones, but I'm going to put them in the cottage garden that we're going to do. Then we have ones that I started from seed and then they've come up in the seed trays. I'm going to put those out as well. Those are all the amaranthus. I have four different kinds of those going in. And then I have some other ones that I started from seed, um, some Dusty Miller. And I'm trying to think of all the ones I started from seed. Dusty Miller, some Baby's Breath, and those desperately want out of their pots. They should have been out of the pot a while ago. Um, and some um, Snapdragons that are ahead of the ones that I did in the winter sown jugs. Then I brought some plants in. So I have some Leatris and some Black Eyed Susan, some more straw flowers. What else is over here? Oh, some Lysianthus. Oh, I started some Gladiolas. I pre-sprouted the bulbs, so I have those as well. I don't know, I think that's everything, but we're gonna try and get it all on the ground today. So as I start putting it in the ground, um, I'll show you as we get it planted kind of what's going on and where I'm putting it. So basically what I did was, I, again, I removed the sod, I topped it with compost, and then I'm going to be using Garden Tone to fertilize everything. 
and then um, I'm not running a drip. I'm probably crazy not to run a drip line. I'm actually just going to water it. It's out here in the same place that we have, see all of our garden beds over here. So you can see all of the garden beds are planted up except for two. And I'm still waiting for um, my, my lady to come and plant her two. She might be waiting to Memorial Day. Some people wait until after Memorial Day to plant, but we hope that she gets that done here in the next couple weeks. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get going. Okay, so my beds run east and west. So the sun rises over here and travels this way. So everything that I plant on this side is gonna be short and everything I plant over there is gonna be tall. That way, the tall stuff on the north part over here is gonna create the least amount of shade for everything else as I plant this way. So I might be off on a couple things, but for the most part, I'm gonna put the shorter stuff down here. So the shortest thing that I'm gonna be growing are the Dusty Millers. Aren't those great? I just think those turned out great. Uh, this is not a proven winter variety. I just had these little cans. So as I was potting them up, I, I stuffed them down inside of here. So the girls love the Dusty Miller and we're gonna use it for the cut flower because it'll give us some foliage that's different than just green. And the girls always want this. And what we get from the flower vendors, it always seems so wilty and icky. So you know what, we're gonna grow our own. This Dusty Miller is gonna get about two feet high. So about like this. And we're hoping that by fertilizing it and growing it, that we'll be able to start cutting on this maybe by the end of July. So I'm gonna go ahead and each one of these rows is gonna have three uh, rows all the way down in it. So this first row is gonna be all the short stuff and I'm gonna do the Dusty Miller. And then I get a Lysianthus here, this beautiful purple Lysianthus. I did not grow these. I actually brought these in from my uh, grower. And so they are started here. And again, these are only gonna get about two feet tall. So they're gonna be in the first row here next to the Dusty Miller. Then what we're gonna do behind that will be down there, I have some baby's breath and that's gonna be and finish out the first row. Then in the second row, um, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm gonna do there. I'll figure it out and I'll be right back. Let me get these planted. Okay, I got my first row done. So as you can see here, I have two straw flowers. I'm hoping they get bigger, but we'll find out. I might have just planted something that'll be pretty and uh, not get tall enough to cut, but we'll find out. I have other straw flowers that are going in. But these are the Granvia Golds. And then I have one, two, three, four of the Granvia Pinks. And then right here, these are baby's breath. They're looking pretty scraggly right now. I just watered them in. It's, it's pretty warm out here, so I'm hoping that they recover here in just a little bit. And I will mulch this bed in once uh, the zinnia seeds come up. This is the Dusty Miller here, so it goes all the way down there. And then I did the Lysianthus here. And then down here are some little uh, Rebeccias. They're an annual Rebeccia. And again, I'm hoping they get a little bit taller. But then I did those candy cane zinnias right here along this edge. So I've got one, two, three to go. All right, let's get at it. Oh my God, it's hot. Somebody hose me off. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. That is some seriously hot work. Look how red my face is. I know, I need water bad. So I finished all of it, but the last two things, which are doing the seeds for the zinnias and the sunflowers, which I am finishing, but I had to like go get some water and sit in the shade for a minute because I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, it's hot. And that is out in full blazing sun. And of course I didn't do it in the morning, I did it in the afternoon. So it's my own fault I'm so overheated. But anybody who looks all glamorous on camera, I don't know how they do it because I'm a hot mess. So that's what I have finished, uh, to finish, but I'm gonna take you over and I'm gonna show you uh, what I got in and I'm gonna drink this water, so I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. I am gonna show you what I got in and some of these are looking very stressed, but I did water them in. They'll perk up once the temperature cools down tonight. So these, this whole row, is, these are my straw flowers. And so this first, this first batch right here, I did quite a few. They go all the way up to this first sign right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows. It's the most are the apricot peach. And then I have the purple red. And there's one, two, three, four, five rows of the purple red. One, two, three, four, five, six rows of the orange yellow. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of the copper red. These look the most stressed, but they were in the ground the longest without water. So, 
So those are all straw flowers in there. So I did the whole row with straw flowers. Okay, so now we got the next row and I have Liatris here and I did just purple ones here and I did white ones here. I didn't do very many, just five of each, but that'll give me enough Liatris for like one cut flower mixer. And then I did the globe thistle here. So I just did three plants of those. So I'll get those little globe thistles that we can use. Uh, those will probably uh, be a fall mixer. Okay, then after that, I have my amaranthus. I think that's how you say it. So this is the amaranthus. And so these, uh, I have three, six, nine plants. These are the hot biscuit. And then I did one, two, three, four rows of the emerald tassel. So those are green. And then I did velvet curtain, one, two, three rows. And then one, two, three, four rows right here. This is the coral fountain. These are all ones that I did as a winter sow in the jugs. And then these are the snapdragons that I did as a winter sow. And then these are the snapdragons that I did as seeds and then potted them up and I pinched them back already. I have not put those in the ground yet because I'm not looking forward to it, but I'll get them done before the end of the day. Okay, and then we have our last row here, and over here we have our spiral eucalyptus, and I'm probably not going to plant all of that. There's two, four, six, eight, there's 16 plants, because I think I might have to put another row in. Uh, I'm out of space, and I haven't even planted my zinnias or my sunflowers yet, and I really want those, so I might find a different place to put those and still grow them, but just maybe grow them one off on their own. So here we have hollyhocks, and we just did three of each. Uh, the first three are the Char, uh, the charter's double, so they're a double bloom. And then the second one is just a mix, and it's called powder puff mix, and those are singles. Then we have two rows of zinnias behind it here that come right up to the end of the hollyhock. And then here we have three rows of sunflowers, and I haven't put them in yet, but they're just imagine three rows of sunflowers. So I'm going to finish those off with the seeds and do the sunflowers here. I thought I was going to do succession planting, but unless I cut out more space, which I might do uh, to do some more sunflowers, I'm out of space because I still had to put the gladiolas in. And so the gladiolas ended up in the garden bed. So these are the gladiolas and I couldn't waste these last four hot biscuit amaranth. So I ended up putting four of those in here as well. And I probably made a huge mistake because see these, these are watermelon, but I'm hoping the gladiolas, cause gladiolas are pretty fast now that they've been pre-sprouted. I'm hoping they're done before the watermelon take off and that the amaranth grows big enough that the watermelon can just vine underneath it. We're gonna find out. Hopefully I didn't just overcrowd this bed, but I had no place to put them and I didn't wanna waste them because I pre-sprouted them and I'm like, we're getting those in the ground. So there they are. I had room in this bed and in the bed they went. So there's kind of a view from where I'm standing right here. And then the other thing I didn't get in was I did have the three Rebeccas uh, that I didn't get in, but I might just plant those in my landscape and cut those from there. I don't really like to cut flowers out of the landscape, but I will in a heartbeat if I need to. Okay, so outside of doing the zinnias and the sunflowers, which I will finish up today, and oh, that breeze is so nice. Oh, I'm telling you. So if you're wondering where I'm at, my property where I live butts up to the store and there's a big line of Arbovitas that separates uh, the two properties. And so the garden beds are just on the other side of these Arbovitas. And then this is my backyard over here. Look how much it's grown since I did my little tour. We'll do another little tour later, but man, it's nice over here. So that was the cut flower garden. We are growing it to have cut flower mixers. It's one of the events that we have at our store. As I explained when I talked about the cut flower garden, one of the reasons we're doing this is because we are a destination location. I'm not on a main strip. I am like in a pocket neighborhood on the south end of town. So we have to create events and make a reason for people to want to come here. And we don't want to just be a store. We want to be an experience where people come and experience what we have to offer at our store. So the cut flower mixers are where you come and you pay $5 to get in and that that pays for like the food and the drink. And then you bring a vase if you want, or you can just make a bouquet. And we have buckets of flowers that you can choose from. Uh, some of them on the first couple, I'll probably have to supplement with my vendors, but then we'll start getting further into the season. And the whole goal is that we're picking them ahead of time so that they have time to drink from the cut flower garden. And then we're using those at the mixers, which will be holding outside in the back landscape area. So that was the purpose of the whole thing. It's just to have this really fun thing. But I'm telling you what, 
kudos to anybody who's a flower farmer out there because that is serious work. I had help cutting out the sod and I had help putting down the compost and the gravel, but I did all of the planting today by myself and thank goodness there was a breeze because it would have been a nightmare. I just, I probably would have just, they would have found me dead on the lawn later today because it was probably in the eighties today. So I'm really glad there was a breeze. So that's all I have for today. And that is the cut flower garden. And as it grows, I'll show it to you. Uh, but that's all there was to it. And I make it sound so easy, but it's like four hours later since I started this video. Um, but thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe below if you like our video, share with your friends. And if you have comments or questions, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to try to help you if I can. I'm Michelle. Keep on gardening. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.